Dan, how much is your first wholesale deal? Eleven thousand dollars. And um, how long did it take you to do that? Three months. And uh, what do you do? Before? What was that? Hello. Yeah. Dan, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. For some reason, I'm, hold on a second, man. Dan, can you hear me? I sure can. Okay, so and what do you do before? What do you do before you get into uh, wholesaling? Oh man, I had a car dealership like literally right before. I, I had a big car dealership. I just closed that whole lot up, um, and uh, just decided to take my uh, first step towards financial freedom. And now here we are. <laughs> Boom, baby! With the man, the legend himself. Come on, man. Let's be Come real. On, man, shit. <laughs> I remember, I remember I was driving one day and I had to kind of pull over because I have to send a text message and yeah. came, came out of nowhere. This guy <laughs> ran up and said, Hey, are you Kong or something like that? Right. And, uh, yeah. and we talked and he said, Hey Kong, you know, I'm going to shut down my dealership and I'm going to go into wholesaling full time. And yeah. I was literally, man, I was like, Oh man, God, dude. I was like, does this guy know what he's about to get into? Because you know, <laughs> For someone to shut down an operation, a business that, you know, they've been doing, like they know it generates, you know, the money and now yeah. just shutting it down and just going all in on something that, you know, they don't really like, like, honestly, like you don't know, correct? Yeah, like, yeah, 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 know. for sure. So, yeah. You no, know, the thing is, it's, it's always a risk, you know, um, I was willing to take the risk to become financially free. And I mean, here we are. It's amazing. It's unbelievable. I mean, just like. The simplicity of just even just getting the, I, I still can't believe that I even got it done, but hey, you know, it works and I know it does, you know, so it's, it's Dan, really amazing. Dan, man, I want to say I'm so happy for you, bro. Congrats. And Thank for you. those that are listening or watching, man, um, I, before we get into the details on the wholesaling deal, how Dan got it and found the buyers and all that, Dan, what, what, why did you decide to shut down the dealership and go into wholesaling? And when you were going through that process, man, like what, what feelings or, 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 or you, you know what I mean? Like, what were your state of mind, man? For sure. No, I mean, I guess um, you got to kind of know my backstory. I could relate to you a lot. I come from a Russian family. Um, so the thing is like in a Russian families, it's like, hey, go get a job. Um, how do you do that? Finish school, go to college, go to university, and then you'll have a good paying job. I was never like that. Maybe I was just like, I was like super um, like different in my family, you know? And um, so I decided to, I'm like, my parents' requirements were like, hey, if you could pay the monthly rent, because hey, we're not going to feed you. You know, I'm coming from a Russian family. And um, I totally understand them. Like, hey, you pay rent. I'm like, if life is pretty much all about money. Hey, I can make the money. I'm going to start a business. So I started hustling my whole life, you know, selling iPhones, huge eBay accounts, and just like doing all that stuff. So I was like, man, this is actually not that bad. It's just, as long as I put some energy and effort into, I can make this work. So then I'm like, okay, I got to take my, um, you know, game to a whole nother level. It was about like 10 years ago. I actually got into wholesaling, believe it or not, 10 years ago. Okay. I started doing it. I just had like a driven passion inside of me and saying, man, what if I, you know, start wholesaling, but I'm missing out on cars. I don't know what car, what a car dealership has to. And I told everybody at school, they're like, yeah, um, you're never going to even start a car dealership. My parents are like, my, my, my parents didn't even believe in me. They're saying, Hey, you know, it's not going to work out. Go get a job. It's going to be more secure. And I totally understand where they're coming from. I'm like, no, I'm going to start a car dealership. And shortly after um, I started that, I ran that business for five years, really successful, build a great, um, you know, customer base. And then I decided, I'm like, you know what? I just can't be doing this. There's really no profit in it. You're always in this like rut of trying to chase the next deal, but you're not becoming financially free. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, I got to literally stop this. So me and my wife, she's like, Hey, you've been talking about this weird thing, wholesaling. I don't know what it is. I'm like, honey, I don't even know what it is, but I know we're going to close our uh, dealership completely, like 100%. I'm not even going to go in there one more day. Huge leap of faith, right? And yep. it's amazing that we come from a small town like me and you. Um, so, and, um, you know, I'm like, man, if this guy could do it, who is this guy, King Kong? Um, so I was like, man, okay, if he could do it, um, you know, I could do it for sure. Like, I'm, I dropped out of high school, literally ninth grade 
school was never for me, but I'm like, there's something in me that tells me, hey, I could do it. And sure enough, um, uh, completely quit that because I needed to be laser focused on one aspect. I can't be just doing, you know, two or three things at the same time. I'm like, I'm just going to do this. If it doesn't work out, hey, at least I tried. I don't want to be 70, 80 years old saying, hey, I wish I tried this wholesaling thing, you know, that everybody kind of talks about. So, and yeah, sure enough, three months after I was still in that phase of like trying to close my operation. Cause you know, it's, it's, it can't be done overnight. You know, when you go so big, it takes time to yep. go the legal process and all that stuff. So um, as I'm doing that, we're working on the side, trying to scramble some deals, trying to, you know, do some cold calls and whatnot. And um, yeah, I mean, here we are, you know, kind of despite of everybody kind of not believing in me, the biggest believer um, in me was literally my wife. She's like, you could do it no matter what, just, you know, push, push forward. And um, yeah, fast forward. I mean, I, I'm just so excited to take my next step and see where this whole, you know, game takes us. So, bro, bro, man, Dan, good for you, man. Um, dude, I, I, I love seeing other people that put in the hard work and they're winning, man. Good yeah. for you, bro. I'm, I'm so happy for you, man. And when you, Thanks, say, brother. when you say your wife is the only person that, believe, you know, that stands by you, believe in you, that pushes you and tell you yeah. to go, dude, I get goosebumps, man. It's because, <laughs> because same thing with me, you know? Yeah. I grew up extremely shy, extremely insecure. I know some of you that's watching this, it's hard to believe, but man, when you see me, when I was 18, 19, you know, like when I was even a childhood, even if, even up into my early or mid 20, you see me, you'd be like, wow. Yeah. I was like a hermit crap, bro. <laughs> and, you know, and the wife is the one that pushes me and she believes in me and she, she, she you know, she tells me that I am made to do better and greater things and, and all that, man. And sometimes, you know, sometimes you don't believe in yourself and it takes, it, it takes somebody that believes in you, that pushes you. And that's why, you know, that's why, you know, you want to surround yourself with people that have ambitions people mm -hmm. that are driven and people yeah. that are excited and they're upbeat, you know, yeah. not the naysayer, not, not people that drag you down, but they pushes you, you go down, you do this, man. But they <laughs> also, but they don't, but they don't, but listen, they don't cheer. They cheer for you, but they also be real with you. Yeah, so yeah, which yeah. means when you suck, they tell yeah. you, you suck. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, so a lot of times you, you got to understand that's why self-awareness is very important. You have those good friends that cheer you on, but For when sure. you're bad at it or when you do something wrong or when you're going down the wrong path, like exactly. they're afraid to tell you. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but yeah, that, yeah. so if, and if you don't know yourself, it also hurts you. Yeah. Yeah. For okay? sure. Absolutely. So it's you very, know, very it's, important. It's very, it's very interesting that you pointed out. I was so insecure. I, I'm, um, I'm not an extrovert. Now I became an extrovert yep. because you start to, you, you need to, yep. but it's amazing how you could develop. If something like you're saying, some people are watching this, they might be saying, okay, this is not for me. It is for you. Start off in your basement, start off in your living room. Like we, I did it all virtual because I didn't think I could do a virtual, but thanks to you, brother, honestly, it's like, man, just watching, you know, your support and just like what you, you know, kind of put out there encouraging people. You know, and I really like that you pointed out, hey, if you don't have a spouse, find that group of people, network yep. with those people, go online, Facebook. I mean, there's a lot of communities, build that community, be the person, be the change you want to see in the world. Don't say, hey, it's not for me until I get married or until I get, no, start right now today because it works. You know, if you want that money, do that. <laughs> That's right. So. A lot of people said, a lot of people said, oh, it's not for me. It's not for me. Listen. Okay. And this is real talk. I'm not going to cherry coat. I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. Real talk, man. When you start to get that money, man, yeah. when you start <laughs> to get that check and that's what gets me excited. Right, dude. When, when, you know, I look at, when I, I look at working for somebody at a job and make 30,000 a year. And now I made that in one wholesale deal, dude, yeah. it gets me so excited. And, yeah. you know, and, and, and I want to do more yeah. and yeah. I'm not, sh I'm not going to sugarcoat anything, dude. It's the money that drives me to like, Hey, let's yeah. do another one. Let's do another yeah. one. Because I knew that, Hey, if I can make that, I can do it again. And yeah. just looking back at 
everything that I have gone, like all the hard work that I have done, right? Working yeah. for working for someone eight hours a day just to make 30K a year. And now I can do that with one phone call. I yeah. said, come on, baby. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. Know? yeah. So, yeah. It gets you super excited for sure. Oh, man. Oh, he oh, heck yeah, man. T trust me. You say it's not for you, but when you close that first deal, I promise yeah. you, it is for yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> it is for everyone, man. <laughs> That's right. So, yeah. Dan, eh, anyways, man, let's go ahead and jump into, and uh, let's go ahead and jump into, talk about your first wholesale deal, bro. Now, I want you to tell kind of the whole story, how you found the okay. seller. I don't want no secrets, man. I want you to share everything, how you found the seller to your family, your buyer, to closing it, to find the title company, all of that, bro. Okay. It's actually an interesting story. It's mind blowing still to us uh, till this day. It gets better than just c closing a wholesale deal, but I'll, I'll explain to you a little later. Okay. So um, obviously I'm on uh, Sean Terry's program, you know, uh, remote yep. to millions. I get that program. I even asked you, remember when we first, uh, uh, when I, when I ran up to him, I'm like, Hey, was but anyway, it was a pretty yeah, good Yeah, company. yeah, yeah. I appreciate you taking your time, brother. Hey, so, um, you know, obviously get into this and uh, obviously it's like, Hey, pull a list, do this. Um, I'm like, okay, pulling list is a little bit, I mean, I had a lot of money to invest. Like I had like, obviously the proceeds from the business, but I'm like, let me be wise about it. I don't want to invest, you know, so much money into, I don't know what I'm doing. So I'm like, okay, I'm just going to start off like small. I got to understand the game. Then as I grow, I'm going to scale. So I start off little. I'm like, okay, I'm going to cold call. What is this cold calling all about? Man, let me tell you, it, it, it's kind of hard. You know what? You don't know what you're doing. You don't know what you're talking about. It's like, okay, first phone call. It's crazy. So I started doing that. I made about three and a half thousand cold calls. Not one deal. Not one deal. I had four lines going at the same time. You know, people are calling back. Hey, who are you? You know, I want, you know, like crazy amount of money for it. I'm like, all right, well, that kind of shook me up. I'm like, okay, wholesaling is not for me. I'm going to quit right now. This is, what is this all about? I'm like, no, 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 no. I already started. I'm going to push forward. So I'm, I'm pushing forward. I pull a list. Accidentally, I'm following the instructions how to pull a list. I pull a list in Albany, Georgia. You don't know, if, if you don't know what's that, the houses are $3,000. I'm like, yeah. where's my profit of like 10? I want to make, my goal was to make 10 minimum. That's it. Right. 10 minimum. At least 11 grand, that was my goal. And boom, I made it happen. So I was like, okay, Albany, Georgia. I mailed Kong $4,000 worth of like postcards Ooh. to the wrong city. I meant the other city. I'm like, okay, a phone call started flooding in. This like literally this guy's telling me, yes, yeah, some, um, you know, some drug dealers were in this house. Someone got shot. I'm like, what am I dealing with? Which city is this? So I literally got so disappointed. I abandoned that city. I'm like, I'm not doing a single deal here. I, there's no profit in here. Um, my, I needed my spreads to be a little bigger. So I started to look all over, um, you know, America. Um, so I'm like, okay, I'm going to do Texas. I pull a Texas list, a solid Texas list. I'm like, okay, now I'm praying. I'm like, okay, hopefully this goes to the right list. Cause I, this got to work. So I pull a pretty big list, about 5,000 postcards. I mail them all out. And shortly after, my phone just is ringing off the hook. You know, the good deals, the somewhat, and then I get this amazing deal. You know, this, like, literally, the seller just agrees to me. First phone call, agrees to me. So we get the property under contract for $103,000. I'm like, this is way too easy. Um, so I get it under contract for $103,000. I get it signed up, um, and I, I try to sell it for one hundred thirty. dollars I'm like, I'll do one hundred thirty eight. dollars nobody literally I get some interest in it um you know nobody everybody's telling me you're way too off on the numbers we need to be at 70 we need to be at 80 i'm like what is this all about why am i wrong on the numbers so apparently it turns out to be the house is in kind of poor condition nice area nice house just um there's a couple you know parts of the house that are not in pristine condition as um you know these uh fixer and flippers want to see and so the and the house has like seven thousand dollars worth of junk to be removed the house is like a hoarder house it's insane it's terrible obviously the seller didn't never tells me this but you know kind of moving on forward i can't find a buyer so i call i literally call the seller and i'm like you know what i can't sell it um but i'm i'm trying my best can you give me another 30 days obviously coming from a car dealership i'm in i'm negotiating this guy i'm like hey 
you got to do something for me. So here's, here's the agreement that he agrees. One phone call, I call him for about 30 minutes. I explain everything to him. Hey, I'm like, Sean, I could sell your house. I need to be at $70,000. He's, he's like, you lost your mind. 70,000 from 103? No, I'm not going to take this. So I obviously, you got to negotiate. I work through the deal. We get the, ha- I renegotiate the contract at 71,000. I'm like, okay, I got that. And then I call all these investors all over again. I'm like, hey, the, I just got a major price, uh, you know, break in the house. What can you do? Still nobody. I reach out to realtors. I literally, you know, um, text all the realtors in town, every single realtor. Nobody, nobody. I get around five or seven people, you know, showing interest in it and not much traction on it. One lady comes up. She's like, I could, I think I have a buyer for it. I'm like, all right, sounds good. Let's do all the paperwork. And uh, so I'm like, I'm giving you a $3,000 spread. If you sell it, I'll give you 3000 because I couldn't really find anybody. Um, so obviously I'm still new. I don't really know how this all works, you know, and whatnot. So we'll get a contract of 71 and um, she sells it for, I don't really know the specific numbers. Um, I think 85 or 86 on it. Um, so obviously I give her the, you know, the three grand and I keep the 11 grand, but it's amazing. She did all the paperwork for me. She did everything 100% for me. She got that. She got the, you know, the, the, the proper contracts in place and everything. And, um, you know, obviously we closed on escrow. She got her part and I got my part and, um, uh, yeah, here we go. You know, it's, it's really amazing. But the best part of this, um, you know, as we pulled so many other, um, you know, kind of towns and places, I'm obviously I'm, I'm getting into real estate wholesaling. What do you do with the rest of the money that you make in wholesaling that I'm, you know, looking in further? I'm like, Hey, I had some money in my bank. I was like, if I find a good deal in the property, I'm going to buy it. Well, sure enough, I found an amazing, deeply discounted property that I'm buying for my portfolio right now. So it's an escrow right now, and we're going to be closing on it. Um, probably uh, early next month because it was like, um, you know, it's the, uh, the title search is taking a little bit of time, but I'm going to keep that in my rental portfolio. My first property ever. I don't know what I'm doing. It's all virtual. I've never, I've never seen the property, but thank, literally only thanks to wholesaling. You get to find deeply discount properties and you get to filter out. I, I want to sell this one or I want to keep it. And um, yeah, I'm going to remodel it um, and um, I'm going to renovate it and I'm going to rent it out. One of my rentals. Bro, so now, so, so the one that you're keeping, is it, is it in another state? Uh, no, no. It's still in Texas in a completely different town. Oh, gotcha. So it's in Texas. It's in different town. Probably the yeah, cash yeah. flow, the cash flow is probably going to be a lot better than compared versus here. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. 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 So my, my, my return investment is going to be off the charts. I mean, I got a super dis- deeply discount. Okay, it's worth around uh, or maybe around one twenty. I got it for okay. literally twenty five thousand dollars right now. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna put uh, around twenty into it, and I'm uh, rents are gonna be around um, from uh, from a thousand to twelve hundred bucks a month. Yeah. yeah, there. See, there's no way that you get that kind of return in our area. In our area, you're lucky yeah. just to get just to be that one percent rules, which means. Yeah. If you buying it for a hundred thousand, you know, yeah. renting out for a thousand bucks, that is, that is the Holy grail. Like it. So that's the 1% rules. If you can get that here where we're at, yeah. you're like, like <laughs> you're you're yeah, yeah, yeah. So a lot of you, if you're in a city or a town or a state that are, you know, expensive, what you want to do is you want to look outside of your box. Yeah. You keep on looking in your box. You may want to look outside, but it, yeah. it's now it's, it's all different. I don't like to invest buying rental in another state. Okay. I yeah. like to still stay in my states. It's different for everybody, but I'm sure every single state there's a high, there's a medium, there's a low. You just got to find that nice, uh, you know, area that the, the, the price got to make sense because you got to cash flow. Yeah. Because you got to think like an investor, not a homeowner. Don't get attached sure. to the property, get yeah. attached to the numbers. If yeah. the numbers make sense, for then sure. you buy it. If it doesn't, you don't buy it. All right. For those of well, you, who's well, let me tell you this real quick. Um, yep. you know, I, I, I really do agree. I was looking in, in our area that we live in uh, without yep. disclosing where we live in, but it doesn't yep. matter. Um, it's insane. I've looked and looked and looked like it's, it's off the charts. Every property is going 50 grand above asking because <laughs> there's people who are bidding on it. It's impossible to get it. 
So um, trust me, I want to invest <laughs> in our area. It's impossible. You know, yeah. who anybody knows where we live. It's, it's, it's stupidly crazy. So, um, and the thing is, it's the right people in place. I have a realtor there. So I literally, for one phone call, I asked him about another property. I'm like, hey, can you help me out with this? So there's a $3,000 commission built in for him to yeah. manage the whole project. So it's all virtual. I don't need to see my properties because if I see the properties, I get attached to them. Yep. Hey, I want to do this. I'm going to rent it out. Yep. It doesn't matter to me. So it's amazing that you get these people in place and he's going to do all the work for me. Yeah, I got to pay him a little bit, but then I get to, I'm in Hawaii right now. You know, it's like, I get to do whatever I want. Because, Good for you, bro. You know, it's, it's, you can't do that with any other business. You got people in place. You got, you know, systems, this it all virtual, you know, I could do, I could be wherever I want and yep. spend time with, you know, with whoever I like, you know, cause yep. it's only possible, you know, doing this. So, yeah. <clears throat> well, so for, for those of you, if you have a brick and mortar, if you're in sales, I yeah. highly recommend that you should, you know, look into wholesaling. I, I, I mean, you know, exactly what Dan said, Ho it, 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 it's actually, it, it gives you the lifestyle that you can only dream of. You can be anywhere, yeah. you can work anywhere as long as you got, you know, a phone, Wi-Fi and a laptop, you're you're yeah. pretty much ready to yeah. rock and roll. Now, yeah. for sure. Now, for those of you who's watching this, if you're looking for a company to poise less like what Dan is talking about, I use prop streams. I'm going to get I'm going to put my affiliate link right below in the description for you. All right? You can go ahead and try them out. Get a 7-day free trial with my link. I'll put it in the descriptions. You go there and you pull a list, all right? Yes. And you can choose whatever states, right? Whatever states that you want, you can pull a list. And then that list, you know, and then you can also from that, you know, Dan sent uh, direct mail, which is postcard and letters. Those are probably the, the most expensive way um, to do it, but it worked, right? Yeah. And yeah, yeah. straight from prop streams, you can also pull the list and you can also, they just came out with a feature where you can send direct mail postcard directly from their website as well for those of yeah. you who's curious who wants to know yeah yeah now sure. so so dan so you pull the list you call and so you cut you now how did so you came in contact with the realtors and she brought the buy to go out to see the property and all that yes yes so um what we did is um i was trying to figure out a way because the house was vacant so what mm -hmm. we did is we literally ordered a log box from Amazon and we shipped it directly to the seller. And I, you know, I kind of stay in touch with the seller saying, Hey, can you go put the log box in the house and tell me the, uh, the key code for it? And that's exactly what she did. She just mailed it out and, um, or yeah, we mailed it out and then they, you know, kind of whatever did this stuff, they put it on the house. And then, um, I just, uh, scheduled kind of people via text. Honestly, I haven't really even talk to anybody and then after the deal was getting closer only then i actually even called the realtor it was all like done by text messages um so it's it's you know really amazing how you could just kind of take it to a whole nother level and uh you know just never even see the property never even talk i don't even know who bought it she was saying um she couldn't find anybody in her list so she reached out to her own brother and her brother is a designer and he's like yeah i don't mind another property you know to be invested it's only because I, you know, I contacted someone and they have a different list of people that we don't have. And it's amazing. You know, sometimes these realtors will find them for free. Sometimes you got to pay them a percentage. So, you, you know, I think a lot of the times, um, you know, maybe people watching this, I was one of those. I'm like, why would I ever pay someone to sell a property? But guys, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter if there's a spread enough for you. Hey, I would never make this $11,000 $11, if I didn't pay her $3,000. Who cares? It doesn't matter. I don't mind paying her fifty dollars if I make $500,000. It doesn't matter. You got to put in perspective. What are you making? What, like, are they making something? You know, if I'm making something, hey, let's, let's, you know, let's get this done. Let's get it going. You know, I think a lot of people get attached to, oh, I want to make the most. Don't think of that. Like, think bigger. Think that you could get, you know, maybe you might make a little less, but you could close 10 more deals because of the knowledge and expertise that you're learning on this one deal. Just kind of, I think a lot of people kind of get caught up in that, oh, how much am I making right now? Don't worry about that. Even if you're making less, you're learning a lot. And you just learn a lot and move on because there's so many other deals. Like literally I have gazillion deals in my pipeline right now. 
all they got to do is just work to them. You know, I'm surfing and uh, I'm at the beach and I'm in shorts and I'm answering phone calls. I'm like, hey, it's such a busy day at the office. They don't know where I'm at. It doesn't matter, you know, as long as you know what you're talking about. And it's actually not that hard. If you don't know something, be like, hey, let me, you know, let me ask my, uh, let me ask my manager or let me ask my team members or my underwriters, like you're saying, you know, and you're going to get back to them the next day or the, you know, the day after or give them a text. So it's, I think people over, really overthink it, how, how complicated it is, but it's actually not complicated at all. It's just, it's just got to do the work, put in the work and uh, just literally talk to people and you will be amazed how much deals you could get. So. I, man, Dan, absolutely. A lot of people said, hey, Kong, it's, it, uh, it seems too easy. It's, um, this might be another get rich quick scheme. Listen, yeah. Yeah. wholesaling is simple. All because wholesaling is you just putting a property under contract at a discount, buy, like, like get low, sell highs, right? Put under contract at a discount, find someone else that's willing to pay you more, and you just assign yeah. the contract over to them for a profit. Sure. It's simple, but it's not easy because you got to put in a ton of work. Like Dan, 3,000 yeah. plus phone call, yeah. right? Yeah. Right? yeah. You know what I mean? Most people can't even handle 300 phone call, right? <laughs> they quit after 300 phone call. Yeah. And, and earlier, you know, earlier, Dan, Dan said that, and the same thing happened to me. You're going to get to the point where you're going to, you're so frustrated and you're so overwhelmed that you want to throw in the towel and you want to quit. Let me yeah. share with you the difference between the winner and the quitter. Mm. At that point, all of your competitions want to quit, right? Yeah. Because everyone goes through the exact same thing, man. Dan go sure. through it. I go through it. I know some other big players, like everybody goes through it. You go to that point where you're just so much where, where, where you couldn't take it anymore. But yeah. that's what separates between the winner and the quitter. The winner, yeah. that's what separates between you and your competitions or whoever it is that are in the same business. Yeah. You push through and they give up. If you can push through that point where you couldn't take it anymore, you will end up to be a winner. Oh, yeah. Most oh, people yeah. will quit. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of people do quit. Yep. You know, so for sure. And I think like um, one encouragement I really wanted to tell um, you know, including myself back when I was kind of, you know, just a little while back is you might be literally one phone call away or the person that you already called, he might call you back because he was kind of caught up in something in the moment. He's like, hey, I might have called this Dan guy or Kong and like literally in two hours, but you're like, okay, I, I quit. This is not for me. Literally, he might be on the phone calling you as you're saying, okay, I'm never going to do this again. You don't know. It might be the biggest deal of your life. You know, yep. it's like, it really depends. You know, if your first deal might be a thousand, your first deal might be 200,000. You never know what the numbers might, he might say, Hey, just, if you give me a thousand dollars for this house, you're like, man, this house might be worth so much. Money. You don't know. As long as you don't ask him, if you don't, if you don't talk to people, how do you know what they're going to sell it for? You know, it's really amazing to just see that, um, you know, the persistence, just never give up, like until you get your first deal. And then after that, like you're saying, you're going to be chasing that, that profit. And like, hey, if I could do this once, I could do a hundred times. And sure enough, you can, you know, cause it's, it's an amazing business. So yeah, dude, ab that. yeah, man, absolutely. And I think, I think, I think I saw this on YouTube or, or Instagram. I'm not sure, but they say working for someone is hard. Being yeah. an entrepreneur is hard. Well, choose your heart. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. you know, like working for someone is hard. Being an entrepreneur is hard. None of them is easy. Choose your heart. Yeah. Because yeah. I remember working for someone and, you know, I don't think that I tell the story, but when I was working at a J-O-B, man, I got picked on. Mm. I got picked on at my work. And, uh, you know, and I literally days, there's, there's days where I sit on the, in the car and I was crying. Mm. I was driving home crying. and. I don't want to get into the whole super details is because someone was working at the company They're gotcha. they're also Vietnamese and he's, he's kind of an elderly. So I respect him. Mm. I didn't want to go to the management and, t and tell on him and, and, and get him in trouble because I, because I have that respect, uh, respect for him, but he picks on me so, so bad, man, because I start to outshine him, mm. right? Because, because he'd been working there for 17 years. I came in with just a year and a half, dude. And I was producing, I was producing more for the company wow. because you're right. So I, so now I start to get recognition from the management yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. anyway, some jealousy things start to happen. And 
I just get picked on every single day because he's he's my department head, right? So he's like the leader. And I was working night shift in with me and three other guys. And he's in control. And he make me all he makes me do all the dirty works. He made wow. me do all the dirty works, right? Mm-hmm. So that way I that way I don't have time to produce products for the company yeah. so I can't get raised. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, and it was it was bad, man. So, anyways, and dude, I suck it up. I suck it up and I tell myself, I say that God will see this and one day I'll mm-hmm. be better than I will be better than he is. Yeah, and sure, sure enough, obviously, get to <laughs> like, you know, God gave me the lights and obviously I, I'm here where I am now. He's still stuck at the J-O-B, blah, blah, blah. But I want you to understand it doesn't matter who you are today. You might yeah. be a loser. You might fail at some business. You know, like you might be, you might not be where you want it to be, but don't let who you are today determine yeah. who you be tomorrow. For sure. For sure. All right. Absolutely. Yeah. No. Now, Dan, I think, um, I think we're about 30 minutes in, man. So let's go ahead and, and, um, and, and wrap this up for those that are, you know, for those that are starting out, Dan, what are, what, what are some tips or what are some key things or what are some things that you have learned along you know, closing your first deal that you can share. So that way that it makes their process a little bit easier. For sure. I got gotcha. you. Okay. So one thing I would love to share, um, you know, just kind of looking back, um, I've always had this mentality, always be positive, no matter what, always be positive. I mean, no matter who calls you or what they say, you know, sometimes we'll, I mean, that's the business that we get to encounter a lot of those people who might be just angry over a phone call. You know, they just might throw the biggest show in the world and they might threaten you. Don't worry about it. That's just the name of the game. Just, just be tough, suck it up like you're saying and move on forward. And uh, don't get caught up in the, in the little details and nuances of, oh, he said this. It doesn't matter. You know, he just might be on emotions. Don't worry about it. So be positive. Second, never give up. No matter what, no matter how long it takes. If it takes you 10 years, literally don't give up. Even if you're doing part-time, it doesn't matter. Never give up. And, um, you know, just I think the third of all is like uh, learn from your mistakes. Hey, if you did something, or if you said something and the customer kind of rejected you right away, like reanalyze that phone call and say, hey, how can I do better next time? Always improve no matter what. Um, even if it's in the little details, you know, over, uh, you know, over a year course, you're going to be way better than you were, you know, um, you know, if you improve one thing a day, next year, you're going to, you're going to do 365 things better than you did last year. And um, so another thing is kind of learn the game, associate with people, um, you know, kind of don't follow everybody on YouTube. Don't, don't go into this at, you know, analysis paralysis, like, oh, I think, no, 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 no. Stick to one or two people at the most. Follow them concretely, just like literally. That's your go-to. The more people you watch, that's what I've noticed um, from my experience, the more confused you get. Because he said this, it works for him. Everybody's game is different. You know, right now, I would um, recommend for people who haven't gotten a deal yet, is just literally um, imitate. Imitate what they're saying. And then, as you get better, create your own content. Mm. Be a creator. Change the game. Don't be the sheep be the black wolf. I mean, just set yourself apart and be that, like, have that tenacity and, and have the courage, have the boldness to do something different. It's never done before. You know, there's a lot of creators in this game that, you know, it's like, even you brother, you're on TikTok. I'm not in TikTok, but I know you're in tech. Nobody does this as a wholesaler, you know, like, you know, watch people and say, Hey, what can I do different tomorrow than nobody does and change the game and be the innovator in the game, be the Mm. one that everybody looks up to. Don't, don't mix in with the crowd. So I think that's very important. If you kind of watching there, you know, like if people are getting educated and they're looking at, what can I do different? Always think in different, like what would set me apart? If everybody's Mm. making cold calls, make those phone calls, but say something different, Mm. create it. Don't be like, well, King or, or, you know, uh, you know, King Kong script says this, I get it and do it for the first time. But over, you know, over some time, you gotta, cause you're going to blend in. You're going to be like everybody else, yep. you know? So one thing and um, yeah, just like you're saying prop stream, that's the best system out there. There's nothing that beats it. Um, you know, do that, pull a list. Um, the, the list that I think I pulled was um, I believe it was pre foreclosure. 
um, or vacancy could do vacancy uh, with uh, tax liens. I, I think mine was one was, I think tax lien um, vacant. They own the property for five years or older and do like, you know, even a property 2000 and, and older and uh, just pull a, pull a, you know, area on the list that you want to target and just go add on it. You know, don't worry about there's other people doing it. There's always like a lot of people are doing it, but just do your own thing. You just, you know, be really respectful to every single customer you come because you don't know what they, the customer that you're talking might change your life. So be really respectful, be very nice, be very polite, no matter what they say, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, cause your customer is always right, you know, but we'll get to work around it, you know? And if we do, man, financial freedom. Absolutely. You know? So, yeah. absolutely bro and listen for those of you who's watching once again it only takes one deals one yeah. good deals to change your financial life around right yeah. dan one phone call eleven thousand. i've done one phone call that's a 50k that's over 100k one phone call one deal all right yeah. so and and i know some of you say hey kong what if i'm lack of motivation now listen every entrepreneur like if you can't self motivate yourself, yeah, it's better for you just to get a job. Yeah, yeah, As yeah. As an entrepreneur, you have to be able to self motivate yourself. Now, maybe you maybe you couldn't find something that you're excited about. So let me give you some tips. Maybe there's a car that you want to get, or, mm -hmm. or 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 for the girls, maybe there's a diamonds, or maybe there's a purse or brand name, or maybe there's a vacation exotic vacation trip. Or maybe you want to retire your parents, or maybe you want to buy your husband or your wife something, or maybe you want this brand new house or, or, or a mansion or whatever it is. Get something that you are excited about. Mm. Like a lot of people said, oh, you're material materialistic. I don't get, I don't give a I don't give a F, dude. Whatever gets you excited, right? Yeah, maybe yeah. it's that, like I said, maybe it's that Ferrari, that Lamborghini, whatever it is, right? Yeah, yeah. Get yourself excited. For right sure. and put that right and, and, and cut it out put it on where you can see it every day and you'll be like man i want that i want that because let me tell you something if you want it bad enough you'll yeah. find a way to get it For now sure. and uh, so, so 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 i create vision boards and all that i take stuff that i like i put on a vision board uh uh and all of that and a lot of you you know lack of motivation too is you start need you need to surrender you need to cut people that are not encouraging you. Like, like when you say, hey, this is what I want to go do. That person should be like, let's go. Let's yeah. do it. Boom, let's do it, Dan. Yeah. Let's do it. You're going to crush it, right? Yeah. They cheer you on. They push you. Not like, um, I don't know. You know, the friend that's saying, I don't know, man. This and that. Yeah. Like, like, like they kind of talk you out of it, you For know, sure. and they pull you down. Those are the people Yet you got to distance. Not yeah. saying that you don't be friend with them anymore, but you got to distance you. You got to surround yourself with the with different type of people, man. Like 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 when Lon want to do something, I say let's do it. Same yeah. thing when I want to do, she say let's do it. Okay, yeah, for sure. I'm, I'm sorry, bro. Well, you you want to see some? I wanted to point a re you you just touched on a such a good point, brother. Honestly, it's amazing. Here's what I really wanted to to point out. I was in that position in life where I was like. How do I find these motivated people? How do I find a group of people? Exactly. It's not easy. And it's never going to be easy. You know, if those friends are demotivating, those friends are pulling you down. Those are the friends that you don't want to have. In my life, I literally, um, I left all my friends at one point in my life. I was like, you guys are not living the lifestyle and you guys are not encouraging me. I literally just left all my friends because the easy friends who come and go are the friends who are not going to motivate you, but you got to find like the diamond, like you got to find gold between the dirt. That's why it takes so hard to find the gold because if it was easy, it wouldn't be valuable. Find those connections, build them. If it takes you a year or two, never give up again, just find those wonderful relationships. Like you're saying that will motivate you, that will inspire you, that will encourage you, you know, and then hold on to the friends and then nurture that relationship. And make a lifelong friendship with that, you know, person. Don't be like, hey, I'm just going to give up because it was too hard. Everybody could say that, you know, that's not the whole point. The point is to, to build a lifestyle that, you know, all of us deserve. And trust me, we deserve a better lifestyle. If we work for it, and it's going to happen, you know, it's just a matter of time. So, yeah. Awesome, bro. Hey, Dan, man, I'm so happy for you, dude. But we're going to wrap it up, man. How can people follow you, Dan? Where can they find you, dude? 
Hey, okay, so um, I think I'll uh, send you the link also. If uh, you YouTube, I just started a YouTube channel. I want to I want to create a YouTube channel of highly motivated people. If you're motivated, if you want more out of life, follow my channel. It's Dan Weiser. Um, I only have one video so far, but I'm going to definitely grow that channel. And, um, you know, doing wholesaling is definitely the wiser choice. <laughs> so, yeah, it's uh, never give up. And uh, that's the community that I really want to build on my YouTube following, um, you know, to kind of, you know, in inspire and encourage people. So um, I really encourage people just to go there and comment if they want a video on anything, on whatever I went through, I'll, I'll be more than happy to make that video and explain in detail how to do that um, for any specific thing. So yeah, it's going to be YouTube Dan Weiser. So yeah. Awesome. You guys, I'm going to put um, obviously Dan, uh, Dan link to his YouTube right below in the description. For those of you who's watching or listening, thank you so much, man. Dan, Thank you for taking the time out of your day to do this. Hey, I know you're on you. vacation and I, I appreciate it, bro. Yeah, for sure. Hey, Kong, thank you so much and uh, all the best to you. Thanks a lot, brother. Absolutely, man. You guys, happy new year and yeah. let's crush 2021, baby. And one more thing. Let's yep. go get this money. Let's go get this money. Let's <laughs> yeah. make 2021 the best financial year of your life. If you're new to the channel, Welcome to the Wholesale to Million family, where we are the doer and not just talker. Throughout my life, I believe in doing instead yeah. of talker. There's too many talker and not enough a doer. So don't be the talker, but be the doer. Make sure yeah. to boom, smash that subscribe button. I hope this interview adds some value to you. If it does, boom, smash the thumbs up. Make sure you turn on the bell notification for me. Until next time, take care and ciao. Yeah, God bless. Take care. Later, bro. <laughs> yeah.